Happy Friday. Matt McAleer, Cumberland Advisors, Director of Equity uh, Strategies, just after the close. Last couple weeks we took a look at asset class strength over the last two decades, as well as market cap strength. Where do we want to be allocated? What has the past tried to tell us about the present and the future? Today we'll get back to what we're seeing in current markets. Uh, we've stressed that uh, this this S&P level, let's call it 2700 to right where we are now, 3025, 3030 has been a range. We've worked our way back up here. It's, uh, it's funny how this range has held. What are some positives we're seeing in the equity market? If you're long the equity market, we are long in both our uh, US ETF, our international strategy, just about fully invested as well, and our trading strategy, which as you know went along uh, August 27th. If you are long, what you like today is what we saw out of our cross market indicators. A couple months ago we talked about it on the video. We watch the markets, but we also watch what's happening inside the markets and what's happening with other asset classes. Nice to see defensives show some weakness. REITs, which have been the strongest asset class of the year, down. Uh, utilities, down. Uh, and bonds, up. Ten-year bond traded through 180 today. I think it closed at 179, but we haven't seen 180 in quite some time. What are defensive? De defensives are where people put money when they are concerned or nervous about the market. Difficult for the broad market to rally if defensive assets have a bid. If rates are dropping as fear money comes in, awfully tough to be very bullish. So nice to see our, our cross-asset uh, class indicators showing some confidence and our interior, our sector as, uh, industries and sectors showing some confidence. Uh, the second thing just to mention and we will go back to about six or eight weeks ago when I said, it, you know, we scratch our heads and see Europe and the developed markets hanging in real well in the face of ugly headlines. You know, Brexit falling apart, their German GDP hitting all-time lows, uh, consumer and business confidence at 10 and 15 year lows. Yet, uh, Europe and the developed markets, including Japan, showing a bid not selling off on that news. We talked about, is it priced in? Is all this bad news finally priced in to the developed markets? Maybe it is. We're up 4 or 5% from those areas, some, some higher. We have some holdings up 6, 7, 8% off those numbers. Emerging markets, a little bit of a bid with the weakness in the dollar over the last uh, two, two weeks. Not a ton of weakness. Just a little bit of weakness. Dollar stopped surging, stopped going up. Does that mean it's going to fall apart? No idea. But it has given emerging markets a little breath, a little air in the balloon, and that helps our domestic markets. When the international markets have a bid and some demand is coming in, it does, have, it does lead to confidence domestically. So next week, will be interesting. Every week is interesting, but where are we? We're back to an area that four previous times in the S&P, the market hasn't been able to move through. So this will be a great little mini battle. Uh, plenty of positive news going on from a quantitative trading action standpoint, juxtaposed to a lot of headline risk news with trade, politics, and, and uh, foreign headline risk, which we see in the, in the terms of uh, China news and Brexit. So tune in next Friday. We'll try to have uh, a little more clarity. Been a busy week. As I mentioned, U.S. fully invested, international, about 5% cash, uh, over in tactical trend. Had a good earnings report out of Microsoft this week. Uh, that, that strategy trading well has about 12% cash. We'll see you next week with some comments from John Mousseau on fixed income.